What's going on guys? Riley here from RP Productions and today we'll be reviewing my brand new 2017 Camaro SS 1LE. Now typically when I do car reviews I only have the car for about an hour to two hours. However, with this car since it's my own personal car I have put over 2,000 miles on this car after owning it for just over a month. So this is kind of more of an ownership review where I hopefully can tell you more honest feedback on the car. So first off, we'll go ahead and start off with what is a 1LE? Well, the 1LE is pretty much a track package for the SS Camaro. That track package includes an array of different performance options, which ultimately make this car approximately three seconds faster around a racetrack compared to a normal 6th gen SS Camaro. Also for reference, this car is faster around a racetrack than the 5th gen Z28 Camaro, which was the hardcore race version, which is pretty incredible to say that this car right here is about $42,000, that car was somewhere in the neighborhood of like sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars. Pretty crazy how technology has improved. Now, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the unique aspects of this One LE. Most noticeably, you'll notice that the hood is wrapped in a satin black wrap with the little One LE hash marks over here. Moving down from the hood, you'll notice the wheels are a twenty by ten in the front and twenty by eleven in the back, meaning this car fits two eighty-five Goodyear Eagle F ones in the front and three hundred five Goodyear Eagle F ones in the back. The brake option is six piston Brembos up front with four piston Brembos in the rear. Now these brakes will stop you from 60 to zero in 94 feet according to Motor Trend's testing. Now if you don't know what that means, this car will pretty much stop from 60 to zero in the same distance as your modern supercar will. Moving now to the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice I have the blackout taillights that GM offers as an OEM aftermarket product. Aside from that, everything is pretty much unchanged on the vehicle. There's a couple minor things I've changed here and there, but nothing super noticeable. Of course, you have the nice NPP quad exhaust, which sounds absolutely fantastic. That sound seriously never gets old and it's easily one of the best sounding stock exhaust I have ever heard on a car. Moving on to the interior now, you'll notice you're greeted to a suede steering wheel, suede shift knob, and these beautiful suede and leather Recaro racing seats. More on these later, however, the rest of the interior, it's a pretty simple interior design, however, I like it a lot for the simplicity and effectiveness. Um, visibility and all that fun stuff we'll get to later in the review, but however, this is a quick overview of what everything looks like. Now let's talk about the performance data on the car. So under the hood is a 6.2 liter V8 known as the LT1, also the same motor found in the C7 Corvette. Horsepower on this vehicle is 455, torque is also 455, which may not seem like a ton, however, when you realize this car is only 3,700 pounds and shares the same platform as the new ATS-V, you'll realize quickly that that is plenty of power for this car. Zero to 60 times on this vehicle are in the low four second range and quarter mile times are in the low 12 second range. Now all of this means absolutely nothing if the driving characteristics of this car are not great. So let's go ahead, hop in the car, take her out for a little drive, and I'll give you my impressions on owning this vehicle for just over a month. All right guys, here we go. Let's go ahead, take the 1LE out for a little spin and do some driving. I'm pretty excited to share this review with you guys just because I'm so ecstatic about this vehicle and I've been having a ton of fun with it uh, over the past 2,000 miles of ownership. So first things first, let's go ahead and address the worry that every potential Camaro owner has and that is, how's the visibility? Yes, the visibility is pretty bad in this car. I mean, I don't think I've ever sat in a car that's any worse than this one. However, you do get used to it and it's become you know kind of normal to me now and it doesn't bother me anymore forward visibility is really not too bad the windows are pretty small actually if you want to use a size reference it's the exact size of my head so i can't stick my head out the window without it hitting um like this and this so um that's kind of embarrassing but oh well the bad part is going to be your rear visibility and your blind spots it's pretty bad and yes, when you sit in here, you feel like you're in a fighter jet, you feel like you're in an army bunker, you feel like you're in a submarine, I don't care, you take your pick, but any simile or metaphor, whatever you want to use that is not good, that's how this is. None of that matters at all 
once you get out driving on some back roads where you can really enjoy this car. That is what this car is made for, and it is so, so good. The number one thing you notice about this car while driving it is just how planted it is and how confidence inspiring it is when you're in the twisties or just on a back road. It's so much fun because you can trust the car so much. I think a big part of that has to do with just how wide the tires are in the front and the rear. 285s in front, 305 out back, like those are some pretty wide tires. The cornering capabilities on this car are honestly ridiculous and I don't think I would really ever get close to their potential full limit unless I was on a racetrack, but really for everyday street use, you will not touch the limits of this car unless you are being absolutely crazy with it. So as I mentioned before, this is the 1LE track package, not the drag package. Those, you know, those can't be used interchangeably. With that being said, it actually is a pretty fast car. For comparison, it's about the same speed um, as like a GT350, a Scat Pack, which is like a SRT Charger Challenger. Um, I mean, low 12 second quarter mile times are pretty quick. So one thing this car does extremely well is 30 rolls. <laughs> if you could put the power to the ground. <laughs> now, that's the traction control on, and keep in mind, these are 305 with rear tires, and you saw how much it just spins all over the place, and it's, uh, what's the temperature today? The temperature outside right now is 66 degrees, and you saw how much of a handful this car can be. So, while 455 horsepower may not seem like a lot on paper, it's quite a lot in the real, real world aspects of this car. Now coming from being the previous owner of a Dodge Charger Scat Pack, I'm no stranger to owning a relatively quick car. What I am a stranger to is owning a quick car that can corner just incredibly well. And when I say that, I mean do them so easily. Like this car will take a long sweeping corner at ridiculous speeds and it just feels completely flat, no body roll, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. The six-speed manual of this car is absolutely fantastic, and in my opinion, that is this car's strongest point. It's just so much fun. The clutch feel, the shifter feel, everything in this car when driving it feels amazing. The Recaro seats that come with this car are probably the best ones I've ever sat in, maybe tied with the GT350's Recaro racing seats. They're probably very similar, um, but they are really good. They hold you in. I don't remember who it was, but I followed somebody on Instagram that has a 1LE, and they use the hashtag, hashtag butt huggers for these seats. And that's a pretty accurate um, hashtag for them is they hug you in pretty tightly. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hyper Blue 6 Gen owner, what's up dude? Now a little more usable power, we'll do a second gear pull from 45. It pulls very, very strong. This is a car that when you begin the pull, it just sets you back in the seat and then you are stuck there. You're just like, okay, cool. The Scat Pack that I owned, for example, it was a, more of a instantaneous power, I guess, where the moment you floor it, you're back in your seat, but then it would kind of not really die off, but it just wasn't as strong. This one's more gradual, and then you build into it, and it's like, okay, I'm stuck in my seat, and I'm not going anywhere. And that's a really cool feeling. One interesting thing about this car is just how long the gears are. I mean, third gear, I believe, ends at 110 miles per hour, which is really fast. So, uh, for example, when most people track this car, they just keep it in third gear the whole time, and you don't really have to shift that much, depending on what racetrack you're on. Uh, but I know like when Motor Trend got their hands on this car and they used it for their best driver's competition, they just kept it in third gear most of the time and set some stupid fast lap time. If I remember correctly, it was like maybe like less than a second or a second off from a brand new GTR, which is insane. At the end of the day, you have to remember that this car is doing things that $100,000 plus cars are doing, and this car only cost about 45 grand. It's just incredible value for what you're paying, I mean, as far as performance goes. One problem though, I would say a pretty large majority of people out there would not like to daily drive this car. Not because it's a harsh ride or it's gonna beat you up or anything, but just as a whole, I mean, it's a track-focused 
Camaro, it's not really meant to be daily driven. It's most people's weekend warrior. However, I said screw it and I daily drive it. I guess if you go into owning this car with the right mindset of, hey, I'm gonna daily drive a track focused Camaro, then you'll be fine. But if you go into it expecting like luxury or a very comfortable cruiser, this probably isn't the car for you. But if you want something that's fast, good performance, it still is really, really comfortable in here, I won't lie. Something that it can do this. It's quick, seriously quick. And then by all means, go out and buy a Camaro 1LE and you'll have a time of your life driving this thing. It's so much fun, seriously. So now let's go ahead and talk about the interior features. The steering wheel and the shifter are like the two primary things you touch in this vehicle. Both are wrapped in suede, which some people may not be a fan of. However, I think it's awesome. It's really comfortable. It feels like you're in a little race car. Uh, the flat bottom steering wheel is really nice as well. The paddle shifters on this vehicle that everybody seems to ask about of why are there paddle shifters on your manual transmission Camaro? Is that an automatic? Is he just faking his gear shifts or whatever? No, they're here for the rev match feature, which basically like right now, fourth, third, I didn't touch the gas at all. So basically it just makes daily driving this car a little bit more comfortable and you know easier to drive. Moving on now to the gauges. The gauges are fantastic. They have everything from zero to 60 quarter mile timers, just like every, I guess, performance car you would expect nowadays to have. The heads up display on this car is absolutely awesome. And it's one of my favorite features on the car just because of, it's one of those little like add-ons that you're like, oh, that's cool. And then when you actually own a car with it, you don't ever want to go back to owning a car without it. It's just really convenient being able to see your RPMs, your speed, all that stuff just right in front of you without having to look down. It's, it's a really small thing, but it makes a difference in ownership. The gauges that I typically look at tell me my fuel range, my instant fuel economy. Heads up display tells me my speed, so I pretty much have everything I would ever need to look at while driving. Chevy really has done a great job with these 6th gen Camaros. Whether you love Chevy or you hate Chevy, you can't argue that the performance aspects of this vehicle are not just incredible for the amount of money you're paying. Some people like to knock the quality of the interior, and while I agree it's not the best, like there's a lot of hard plastics up here, up here, like there's hard plastics in a lot of places, honestly. Even the places that are leather wrapped in this car, such as the um, center console here and this thing over here, it's just like hard plastic they cover with like a thin layer of leather, and it's, it's just kind of meh. So in that regard, it's not the best interior, but I really don't care. The navigation screen works great, and does everything a typical navigation screen would do. You have Apple CarPlay and all that fun stuff. The performance data recorder is awesome. I love using that thing. Uh, when I posted my previous video of me racing at the drag strip, everybody was like, where did you get that screen? It's the performance data recorder. Corvettes and Camaros have it. Pretty much you plug an SD card into this little slot down here, kind of by, uh, I guess where the trunk release, or not the trunk release, the hood release button is. You plug an SD card in, you go into the nav screen and you say start recording and then it will overlay your speed, your RPM and all that good stuff uh, onto a screen that you can then upload to YouTube or do whatever you want with. Now it may seem like I'm giving this car a ton of praise and acting like everything with this car is just fantastic and top of the line and that's not the case. I'm just saying realistically for a car that's $45,000 this does an incredible job. There are several things I dislike about the car, which I'm gonna go into more detail when I make like a eight things I hate about this car video and like eight things I love about this car video. This is just a general overview, the review of this car, giving, you know, just kind of initial things. If somebody's in the market for one of these cars, I definitely say go out and give it a second look. I mean, they are really fun cars. All of the owners of 1LEs that I have talked to say they absolutely love their car as well and they don't have it really any major complaints either. So in conclusion, would I recommend the Camaro 1LE to any potential buyers out there? Hell yes, go check it out. I think that you will be more than satisfied with the vehicle. If you have around $45,000 and you're looking to buy one vehicle as your daily driver and your race car, this is a really strong candidate. I know there's a lot of you know tough competition out there, but this is a really solid choice. I'm highly looking forward to taking this car out and doing different road course events and doing more you know, actual racing with the car. That's going to be extremely exciting. I'm also really looking forward to modifying this car, which is something I do plan to do. Not that it's bad in stock form, I'm just, you know, I don't know, I wanna modify my car. But I'm super excited to share the ownership experience with all of you guys via YouTube. So if you're new and you wanna see more on this car, definitely stick around and subscribe. There'll be plenty of fun things
okay? There will be plenty of fun things happening with this car in the future, so look forward to that. But for now, guys, I think that pretty much sums it up, and unfortunately, it's kind of getting dark out. I apologize if the lighting has not been the best, but sometimes you just have to work with the conditions that you have. So as always, guys, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.